Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. We're nearing the end of US 1, a series that I've been looking at since my sixth episode back in 2008, and yes, I know he was in She-Hulk, we'll talk about those after this series is done with. Last time on US-1! After the Highwayman revealed that the villainess Midnight was a mind-controlled Mary McGrill, and that he was behind all the various plots against Ulysses Solomon Archer, I mean, except for maybe the bikers harassing people in a small town, I guess the premise for that one wasn't ludicrous enough for him to be involved. The aliens showed up again, and the highwayman fled. Ulysses went in pursuit of him, but failed as it turned out his black rig was every bit a match for the US-1 truck. In the final pages, it's revealed that the highwayman was, in fact, Jeff, Ulysses' older brother who was supposed to have died back when the series started. So let's dig into US-1 number 11, and finally get an explanation for how the hell that makes sense. The cover's not great! And come to think of it, most of US-1's covers have not been great. Maybe that's actually what doomed the series more than the premise. Even this many years later, I have to keep explaining why I say no looking at the covers for stuff reviewed in trades. Because generally speaking, the covers do make a difference for people buying an individual comic issue. And generally speaking, that's not the case for people who buy trades. So there's no point in reviewing it there. Especially if it's just a re use of a single issue's cover. And when you have a series with a big-ass US-1 logo on it, but like super stretchy, surreal images of some trucks, a weird green silhouette, and a dude making this face... Dull surprise! <sighs> I just don't see many people going, oh yeah, I've got to find out what's happening in this comic in relation to it. I mean, I guess at this point they knew the series was ending anyway, but it's not like they were trying to be lazy with it, just weird and surreal for no reason. Anyway, we open where we left off last issue. The reveal of the Highwayman is Jeff... And man, if you did somehow pick this one up as your first issue, you'd probably assume that truck right there just did a sick jump off a ramp and is about to crush these two. No, it can't be! The Highwayman, the man who's been threatening my life these past months, is really my brother, Jeff! Eh, yeah, this is pretty normal for siblings, I found. Tisk tisk. so surprised, little brother? Was this rubber mask I wore as the Highwayman really so deceptive? Well... Yeah, actually. It didn't really look like a mask at all. You were like a demon whose face was perpetually in shadow. Good craftsmanship, man. Stay with us, sea beers! This is but the first of many revelations you'll be treated to in a tale we like to call... Transmissions from Space! This is a weird remake of the movie Contact. Ulysses is of course baffled because of Jeff's apparent death, but Jeff says he only made it look like he was killed when the truck exploded. I can't believe that my ultra-smart baby brother, Ulysses Solomon Archer, didn't catch on earlier. Eh, don't put too much faith in his intelligence, he just decided to buy some truck NFTs. Ulysses, of course, wants to know the reason for all of this, but before he can explain, the aliens catch up with them. I know I've been saying this for every US-1 episode for a while now, but it always needs to be remembered. This is a comic series based on slot car racers that's about a superhero trucker and also heavily features aliens! Jeff yells at the aliens that he'll prove he's better than US, 
And his preferred method of doing so is to try to strangle him. The alien ship zaps Jeff, which freezes him in place. This has gone on long enough. The dispute in question cannot be settled by crude physical violence. It must be settled with refined physical violence. Ulysses wants to know what the dispute is exactly. It is time for all this to be explained to you. Too long have you been kept in the dark while your brother plotted against you. And by that they mean they're gonna pad this out for another few pages. Not kidding, the explanation isn't gonna happen for a bit. US thinks that it makes no sense for Jeff to turn against him like this. That maybe the aliens affected his personality in some way. Clearly they gave him access to some of their advanced technology and that's how the black rig can fly. Still, he also recognizes that if they could do that, why not just do it to US as well? In any case, he says he needs one hell of an explanation for all this. Jeff and I have always been more than brothers. We're friends as well. Brothers aren't normally friends. I say that you are wrong, U.S. Archer. Though your loyalty towards your brother is commendable, it is unfortunately misplaced. Holy, a gigantic holographic projection of the alien filling up the entire sky. They have absolutely no reason to do this, but it's impressive nonetheless. All will be explained to you, but this is hardly the place for it. Some innocent passers-by might stumble across our little tableau here. It's a good thing I'm not doing anything right now that might grab anyone's attention. And frankly, I'm not interested in becoming another swamp gas sighting statistic. I'm good enough for weather balloon, dagnabbit! U.S. and Jeff get back in their trucks, which are flown away by the aliens. Ulysses thinks about how he originally encountered the alien and got help in his race against Terran that resulted in his truck flying the last time. But is that really why he helped me? Did he really need those pieces of poultry? Or was it just part of some weird scheme that ties in with Jeff and all these crazy goings-on? I mean, either way, it's weird, so what's the difference? Come to think of it, the alien spoke like a refugee from a CB radio nightmare the first time I met him. What happened to those speech patterns? Dang it, was there an editor on this comic at all? They fly overhead of some people making out in a car. Eep! Eddie, there's a couple of trucks flying over us! Sure, baby, sure. Lots of girls see interesting stuff when old Eddie lays his lips on them. Poor dope doesn't realize that means he's so bad at it that they're thinking of anything else. They soon arrive back at the truck stop, where Mary is recovering from the effects of the hypnosis while the others ponder what to do about all the truckers and Nazis still frozen. The aliens drop them back down, and U.S. says they'll get answers soon. However, Wide Load takes this to mean that they can finally deal with the highwayman and grabs a huge wrench to beat his ass, but of course is as shocked as the rest to see it's Jeff. Jeff! Y you were the highwayman? But how? Why? Long story short, this is the outfit I wanted to wear while trucking, but no, it's plaid jeans and a hat, or else it ain't trucking. On board the Baron's Blimp, we are once again met by the unscrupulous realtors of Clutch, Grab, and Legreed. I know writers who use subtext, and they're all cowards. They're quickly noticing that things are getting out of control, what with the flying trucks, the Nazis, and the aliens. So they decide to climb down the rope ladder the Baron used for his blimp and get the hell out of there. However, they're also really curious about it all, so they hide in some bushes to observe everything going down. The lead alien steps out of his ship. Greetings, Earthlings! Can the B-movie dialogue, pal? All I said was hi, jeez. Before giving explanations, he decides to clean up the area a bit, first dealing with the Nazis. These strangely garbed people are quite distracting. Obviously, they seek to call attention to themselves. No, 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 That's the Nazi enablers who want attention for themselves. I know it's hard to tell the difference sometimes, but trust me, comic from 40 years ago, they don't just want attention. I can send them where their strange, outmoded garments will garner all the attention their undernourished egos crave. A YouTube comment section! Using some kind of teleportation device, the Nazis are beamed away. What? Baron von Blimp and all the neo-Nazis are gone! Yes, this little device is even better than ColecoVision, is it not? Isn't that just an Intellivision? I said it was better than a ColecoVision! They are gone! Disappeared without a trace! I don't like Nazis any better than the next guy, but this... No, 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 Papa Wheelie. The beginning and end of your statement should be, I don't like Nazis any better than the next guy. And we move on. But no, the alien didn't disintegrate them, he did something... 
else to them. He teleported them right in the middle of downtown Tel Aviv. We need not stick around for the carnage that follows. Suffice to say that the Baron and his cronies received just the welcome you might expect. Yeah, maybe the alien should have just disintegrated him. Seems like it'd be more of a mercy. The alien unfreezes the truckers, who apparently have severe head and stomach aches after being frozen for so long. They don't really question it, save for believing that maybe something was in the truck stop's food, saying out loud that they won't be returning. The three greedy realtors decide to take advantage of this. They head over to the truckers and ask for a lift back to town, claiming to be health inspectors, saying they're gonna shut the place down for its bad food, but in turn asking them to spread the word to other truckers to avoid the place in the meantime. And so, even as the trucks pull out of the parking lot, their citizens' band transmitters sear the airways with warnings to stay away from shortstop. I mean, you probably didn't even have to go that far. They could have just warned people about all the Nazis that were there, and that the place is a constant wreck from all the fights that break out. Meanwhile, everyone else is gathered inside by the alien, U.S. wanting to know why the alien's speech patterns keep changing. He explains that in studying Earth, they learn the language by studying many forms of mass media. None of us could determine which mode of verbalization was preferred amongst you who dwell on Midgard. Television, CB broadcasts, even comic books were studied. Unfortunately, they ended up studying Marvel and quickly abandoned that medium in a hurry. He explains that the aliens of the Federated Planets want to make first contact with Earth, but instead of dealing with politicians, they want to handpick the representative from Earth. We sought someone intelligent, courageous, someone willing to face the terrors and adventures of space, the final frontier. We have come for the one you call Mr. T. No, of course, they have selected Ulysses Solomon Archer for the job. The problem is that despite absorbing tons and tons of mass media featuring humanity and all its various differences of appearances, all you Earth folks look pretty much alike to us. Space racism. Spacism. But yeah, because they had a tough time telling people apart, they accidentally picked up Jeff instead. Jeff never corrected them on the mistake, so for years, they trained him instead on everything needed for the first contact. U.S. thinks that Jeff was trying to protect him from the dangers of such a thing, but Jeff denies that. He says he wanted the glory. All my life, you were always the good one, the smartest, the strongest, the best student, and the best athlete. This was my chance to win one for once. Well, yeah, but since everyone would think you're Ulysses, wouldn't he still get the credit, at least by name? Or when you met the aliens, did you say, Oh, please, Ulysses is an informal name. Call me Jeff. He goes on to explain that he's been jealous and resentful of U.S. his entire life, seeing his parents consider him the golden child, winning every competition between them, having to struggle every day to get even passing grades in school while Ulysses skated by without difficulty, and yet dreamed of being a truck driver instead. And I love how hurt Ulysses clearly is of this. He legitimately loved his brother, and hearing all this is heartbreaking. When their parents died, any chance for Jeff to go to college died with them. Papa Wheelie and Wideload couldn't afford to send either of them, but Ulysses had a scholarship. In turn, Jeff drove a truck to help support him while he was there, and despite all the successes in schooling and monetary support, Ulysses still wanted to give it all up to become a trucker instead. That was the final insult for him. And so instead of actually talking to you about these problems like a normal person, I decided to become a demonic trucker-themed supervillain. I've got issues. I kid. Honest to God, the writing and art are doing a pretty damn good job selling this explanation. Sure, it's a little weird given the Highwayman's personality we've seen up to this point, making me wonder if there was a different reveal planned before they had to wrap up everything by the 12th issue. But I've got to give kudos to making this moment convincing. Ulysses tries to apologize to him, but Jeff doesn't care. Sure, you're sorry. It's easy to feel sorry for someone else when everything's going your way. To be fair, man, this has not exactly been a great day for him. This is still the same day from issue 8 to now. Both of his love interests were suspected of being Midnight, fighting Nazis, his brother turned out to be evil, flying trucks. It's not exactly been cruising down Route 66 blasting C.W. McCall songs. 
Ulysses asks why he did the highwayman thing, fake his own death, and then continually go after him. Jeff explains that the aliens weren't satisfied with his performance, so he figured they might discover his deception. As such, he decided to put some distance between himself and Ulysses by faking his own death. The other truck was robot-controlled and had a dummy highwayman in it to sell the whole thing. He leapt clear of the truck as it rolled off a cliff. I didn't want to kill you, but the truck crashed harder than I had expected. You literally drove it off a cliff! How good were the airbags supposed to be in that thing? The demonic creatures that approached the truck were not his own, but rather they were the aliens who had realized their mistake and had gone out to contact him. And they disguised themselves as devils with horns and all because... Uh... Well, see, there was this episode of the 1980s Twilight Zone where a trucker is employed to take souls to hell, and they had just watched that. They got the heavily injured Ulysses to the hospital. It was actually the aliens who performed surgery on him and implanted the metal cap in his skull. It ultimately gave you the abilities necessary to compete more or less evenly with your brother, who already had the advantage of access to our advanced technology. So, being able to pick up CB radio transmissions in your skull is a necessary ability in your planetary representatives? The reason they didn't just come out and explain this to Ulysses is that they didn't want to think that they had wasted all their time and effort training Jeff. Still, they knew that Ulysses might still be the best man for the job, so Jeff had offered them a counter-proposal. A contest between the two of them. And said contest was... Hiring Baron Von Blimp to race the rig in a chicken transporting deal? Having Midnight harass them a few times? and occasionally menace him in a maze or something. Again, this is why it kind of feels like this explanation doesn't really match up with the rest of the book. It does work on paper, but when you think about it in more detail, it's a bit of a head-scratcher. But yeah, the alien says that Jeff was not able to beat Ulysses in the allotted time, but by that same token, U.S. never really won a decisive victory against him. Except for all those times where we saw him definitively defeat the Highwayman's agents, so... And so our comic ends with the alien proclaiming that they're gonna settle this once and for all. A final contest between the two on equal footing. To decide which one of you will... INHERIT THE STARS! And which of them will pay the inheritance tax on those stars? This comic is pretty good, though admittedly most of it is just sweeping away everything from the last few issues so it can get to the end. The explanation for the Highwayman stuff doesn't entirely hold up, but the character work is awesome. As I said, the art and writing really sell this, particularly Ulysses' pained expression about thinking he and his brother were truly friends. To hear that he was unknowingly feeding his brother's resentments are legitimately heartbreaking for him. And I like how Frank Springer's art draws Ulysses and Jeff with similar facial structures since they're brothers and all. In most panels, at least. It's a nice touch, though I don't know how deliberate that was. For an issue that lacks action, it's still very engaging and interesting. Hopefully it can keep that momentum up when we reach the final issue of this saga. Next time, Patreon-sponsored review again, as we look at some issues of X-Men Infinity. wrapping his tentacles around them while he talks about a contest between the two? 
Hello my friends, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell for notifications on new video releases. If you'd like to support future videos, you can check out my Patreon or purchase a t-shirt via Teespring or Shark Robot. Thanks for watching!